In the fast-paced world today, quick and reliable communication is crucial. Today, we utilize many technologies to accomplish these goals. For general communication, the most often used technology is the most simple, wires. Landline telephones are connected with wires, as well as cable television. Even the internet today would not be available without the cross-Atlantic fiber optic cables that connect the United States to the rest of the world. But what if I told you that some forms of these technologies actually get their information from computers speeding in the depths of space, moving at over 4 miles every second? Well, we can just call them satellites. Satellites are crucial for many forms of the media today, and media being things like television, internet, phone calls, and other things that send and receive some sort of information. But how do the advancements in satellite development benefit mass media? Well, with satellites' role in history, how they work, and finally their impact on society today, I will fill your head with the information that will blow your mind, or at least let you appreciate the roles of satellites more. First things first, we will travel back in time to the earliest forms of communication. Morse code. Dots and dashes that sounded the same could either be a message that could unleash a fleet of soldiers into an enemy country, or just a message saying, hey, what's up, to your friend that also had a Morse code machine. Well, most people didn't. Anyway, these forms of communication relied on telegraph wires. Other things such as telephone later used these wires. Wireless radio wave technologies could connect areas without wires, but they all relied on large mast antennas that would broadcast the information. According to History.com, the first two-way communication satellite that was launched was the Telstar. It was launched at Cape Canaveral atop a NASA Thor Delta rocket on July 10, 1962. AT&T was the company responsible for this satellite, and thousands huddled around their TVs to witness the first broadcast of a black and white Statue of Liberty. But even before the Telstar satellite, governments around the world, well, pretty much the Soviet Union and the United States, were making communication satellites. According to the Britannic, I mean Britannica.com, the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, was launched successfully by the Soviet Union on October 4th, 1957. But this satellite was more of a beeping soccer ball in space. The United States' more powerful SCORE satellite, or signal communication by orbiting relay equipment, launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida on December 19th, 1958 where it broadcast a taped message conveying peace on earth and goodwill towards men everywhere from the U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower. But going back to the future with Telstar, it was a milestone in future communications. Today, according to Talking Point's memo, there are over 1,100 satellites in orbit today, many of which are communication satellites. We have satellites that broadcast TV, some that give internet to places, and even some that let you call anyone from anywhere regardless of cell service because they have a satellite network that always has coverage. I wish our phones would connect to them because that would be a lot nicer to have service everywhere. Now that we know the history of satellites, we should know how they work. The first step on getting a satellite to work is putting it in orbit. After getting it there with the help of a rocket, it can start working. But how exactly? Well, satellites work mostly as a relay. This means that a signal is sent to them, and then they communicate with other satellites, and then send their information back to Earth. Those satellite dishes on your house are gathering information from the satellites every second, but as I said earlier, the satellite moves. This causes big problems with communications. Say you are watching your favorite show, Oprah. Now, say you're getting a signal beaming from a single satellite moving in excess of 4 miles per second. It will quickly move across the sky, and you'll have no more Oprah. That's not actually what happens because engineers have clever tricks to create a constant communication. One way is just to increase the number of satellites. If you have enough satellites passing overhead, you are bound to have one pass overhead to give you signal. The problem with that is this can cause issues with switching over to other satellites. This is also more expensive because there are more satellites to build and launch. A solution to this problem is putting satellites into geosynchronous orbit. According to How Stuff Works, an article titled How Satellite TV Works, most communication satellites are in geosynchronous orbit. This means the satellite is orbiting at the same speed as Earth rotates. You may have noticed that satellite dishes that are attached to your house are in a fixed position. That is because satellites are in the exact same position in the sky at every moment. To get into geosynchronous orbit, a satellite needs to be at an altitude of 35,786 kilometers or 22,236 miles above the Earth's equator. It also needs to be traveling the same direction as the Earth spins. A downside to this is there may be a delay in the signal brought down, but since the speed of light is so fast, it really isn't a big deal. This brings the next point, the actual way they transmit. As said earlier, satellites don't generally have signal if they are not in line of sight. The reason satellites need to be line of sight to work is because they transmit electromagnetic waves. 
These waves only work if there is a non-interrupted line from transmitter to receiver. This is also why we get that awful no signal message on our TVs when we're watching Oprah in a snowstorm. This chart shows the United States frequency allocations. Early satellite television was broadcast in the C-band radio, radio in the 3.7 GHz to 6.4 GHz frequency range. Digital broadcast satellites program in the KU frequency range, which is 1.7 GHz to 14.5 GHz. As you can see, there is a lot of spectrum allocated to television broadcasts. Now as we see, satellites play a crucial role in media communication. Overall, with the history, how they work, and their impact on society today, we have a lot to thank for those whizzing computers in space.